Yeah, hi, I'm Mike Madonna, VP of R&D here at, uh, at Shiru. Well, Mike, it's great to connect with you and you guys are doing some really interesting work and we're gonna dive into how you're using AI to do your job better, but I'd love to hear a little bit about your personal journey. How did you get into this role of VP of R&D for this company that's making next generation and novel ingredients? Yeah, you know, so my my background is is really as a you know protein analytical chemist. Uh, I really started out in biopharma, you know, characterizing monoclonal antibodies. Um, but then I you know just kind of wanted to use my skills in a, maybe a little bit more tangible way and made the jump into the novel food space, uh, starting at at Eat Just uh, about eight years ago. Um, and so you know, really excited about working on things that. Uh, I could kind of put my hands on or, or taste really. Uh, and, and something I could point to my family at a grocery store and say, Hey, I worked on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I feel like pharma is maybe a little bit harder there to do that. Say I, I helped with this, you know, this <laughs> serum or this cancer drug. It seems like we've seen that trajectory for a lot of folks coming out of pharma into food though. That seems like it's trending. It, well, I think a lot of the skills are transferable, right? A lot of the technologies are transferable uh, to this new wave of manufacturing uh, ingredients and in foods, you know, particular, you know, precision fermentation. Um, and so I think, you know, kind of growing up and in, in, in my early career and, you know, and certainly in college, all of the biochemistry industry prospects were in the biopharma. Uh, and then, you know, really the last 10 years, this, this uh, spin out into using those technologies for food uh, has become, you know, in vogue and, and, and a way to kind of leverage those technologies that have been developed for, for decades uh, for food and to improve our food industry. I don't want to use the term mafia, but it reminds me of like the PayPal mafia where we saw a lot of folks coming out of an early internet company with Eat Just, Eat Just is a seminal early future food company. You know, you know, Jasmine came out of there. They're for folks that don't know Eat Just. They make those plant based eggs, and they also have a cultivated meat spin out. But it seems like a lot of folks in the space now got their start at Eat Just. Yeah, I'd say Eat Just is certainly one of the one of the pioneers in the space, alongside you know, I think uh, of like an Impossible Foods, uh, which really kind of proved out that these technologies could be used to uh, to improve our, our you know food system and and make make ingredients and in foods that were more sustainable so your job is vp of r d for shiro what is like a day just real quickly a day in the life what are you doing um you know it's a lot of uh scouting out potential like new functions what's what's most exciting where do we feel like there's a the bigger you know biggest gaps um and identifying you know, how to leverage our technology, how we can bridge, okay, here's what discovery for this space looks like. Here's where the, you know, the premium incumbents are um, and what, you know, what technologies on the, on, at the bench, on the wet, you know, wet lab side, uh, do we need to develop or can we, can we leverage to not just predict the proteins, but then validate their performance, right? You, if you can, predict proteins all day, but then you have to be able to show and demonstrate, yes, they do this particular function. Yes, they are. They can gel. Yes, they can make a stretchy cheese. Um, uh, that's that's a lot of what, what I'm involved with is is identifying new opportunities, making sure that our, our, our tech is ready to, to validate them. Um, and then, you know, once we do, how do we scale? How do we bring it to market? I wrote an article this morning about how there's a, there's a separate company trying to digitize the world of olfactory and, and smell. I feel like just the broader digitization of food is just this big, massive mega trend that's been happening. You guys are right in the middle of that. I don't think you can really run an AI engine trying to look for all these novel combinations without a, really kind of digitizing the, the, the food world and all these different components. Talk a little bit about that digital transformation and how that's fed into accelerating innovation using AI? You know, it's, proteins are really uh, remarkable uh, molecules and we've been studied for, for a really long time and 
predominantly again for you know pharmaceutical or just how our, how our body's metabolism works um and so it's there is a lot of information that can be easily uh you know digitized as you said um but then we also have to when you're trying to think of it in a different way right not just how what what physiological function does this protein perform in a plant uh but how can we manipulate it and use it to do you know some you know mat pull its materials characteristics out which is a lot of what we what we do here um those things have to be uh sort of teased out and that's where the computational models really can help is not just because obviously the computer doesn't know what a, what a protein is supposed to do. It can look at the language of proteins, the sequence, the structure, and all of these different, you know, thousands of variables that, that make a protein uh, and tease out uh, some interesting or, or useful properties uh, without having to go and, and screen a protein through, you know, a thousand different functions that you might want to try. And I know you guys announced your marketplace, the Amazon for proteins earlier this year. And I think companies who are looking to build a new food product that want to bring in new inputs that may be contributing to a better for you type of product, they can put in characteristics like, okay, sweet doesn't spike your insulin, may no off notes in terms of taste. And you guys have essentially a marketplace that is uh, has a bunch of different proteins in it that then they can provide some potential ideas for them. And then they, if it looks good, they can work with you. Can you talk a little bit about that Amazon for proteins uh, marketplace you guys have? Yeah. So um, it's, you know, we call it protein discovery AI and you can approach it in a couple of different ways. And one is, as you mentioned, Hey, there's a function that I want like sweet or, uh, gelling properties and you can come to, to the website and, and search that particular function and uh, you get access to a, you know, curated uh, database of over 30 million protein sequences uh, using our computational models to filter for the particular function that, that you want. Um, and again, you know, that's a lot of what I talked about is we've done a lot of the diligence behind what, what performance indicate, you know, what are the key performance aspects for any one of these functions? Uh, and so you can dial that up and you'll see a, a filtered list based off of our predictive models. And you can order small quantities of those proteins right then, right there. We'll make them and, and ship them to you. Uh, and if they perform well in your hands and you want to talk about scaling it up and, and, and partnering with us, uh, to produce it and, and really explore the usefulness of any one of those proteins, we can do that for you. Or can you, you can talk to us if there's a function that's missing and we can, okay, let's, let's dig into this with you and, and do a partnership there. That's probably some of the fun work for you. Can you, for a layman describe, okay, you're going to someone get an inbound inquiry from your marketplace. They want a certain protein and you say you'll make it. And then maybe ultimately if they want to order a bigger lot, you will help manufacture it. Can you at a high level talk about how you're making these proteins and then how, if they become a bigger client, how you would manufacture these proteins at a, at a more scaled level? Sure. I mean, you know, at, at, the, small, at the small scale, we do a lot of high throughput, uh, high throughput strain engineering uh, for, you know, precision fermentation of these proteins in, you know, bacterial or, or yeast or fungal systems. Uh, and so we can quickly turn around you know these small proteins we've got sort of a, a, a plat our platform that we've developed over the last uh, three or four years here that can reliably produce these proteins uh, efficiently and it's the scale up has always been the challenge in synthetic biology and so that's where it, you know okay let's test and make sure these proteins work in your hands uh, and then when we we want to scale up and produce you know you know hundreds of grams kilograms that's a lot of just scale up challenge and, and process development that that has to be done kind of jointly uh, understanding those you know product specifications around purity and you know techno economic analysis um, that once we get past the proof of concept stage that's you know really where we want to partner with best in class uh, organizations that know how to do those things we feel like our core uh, capabilities are around the discovery 
and production of, of these proteins uh, at, the, at the small scale. And then, you know, let's work together and, and, and scale it up to, to commercialize from there. You guys announced a partnership with a big Japanese conglomerate earlier this year, Anjimoto, who I will be seeing when I go to Tokyo in a couple months uh, for SKS Japan. Um, I mean, they're just a massive company in Japan. They're, they're iconic. And so that's a great win for you guys. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing with them? Yeah, sure. So this is a partnership with uh, Ajinomoto Health and Nutrition. Um, and and so they wanted to partner with us. They saw the sweetness uh, functionality on our on our protein marketplace. And, and they wanted to engage with us to explore identification of novel sweet proteins. Uh, so there are a handful of, of proteins that are known uh, to, to be sweet and, and cause the sensation of sweet without impacting, you know, your, your blood, sh- your blood glucose levels. Um, and, uh, they, they mostly predominantly come from plants in, you know, sub subtropical areas, but we want to, we think we can identify, we know we can identify, we've got predictive models that have, uh, found these, these proteins that, that are predicted to be sweet. And so we partner with the Genomoto to find ones that can work in, in their, uh, target applications and, and are scalable. Very, very cool. All right. Well, um, Michael Madonna, uh, thank you so much for spending time with me. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. People can find out more at shiru.com. Shiru.com or protein discovery.ai. All right. Thanks. Thank you.